Are you struggling to pass the CPA exam? Did your review course fail to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference. So let's see if you can answer four multiple choice questions that any successful reg candidate must know. We'll start with this business law question. All right, so this is a question on agency. Whenever they tell you someone's the assistant manager of purchasing, that's an agent. So Jay is the agent, Henley Corp is the principal. Jay has authority to enter into purchase contracts on behalf of Henley, provided that the price of the contract does not exceed 500,000. What does that mean? That means Jay's actual authority is 500,000 and no more than that. But does that mean that Jay will only be able to enter into contracts with a limit of 500,000? No. Jay's going to wind up entering into contracts that are over that amount and they're going to ask you, is the principal liable? It just means that Jay shouldn't enter into contracts above 500,000 without the principal's permission. But of course, Jay is going to exceed his actual authority. Let's watch it unfold. Renfro, who is the president of Henley, is required to approve any contract made by Jay or any other agent that exceeds 500,000. So that's the limit on Jay's authority. Jay entered into a $3 million purchase contract with Lottie Corp. Who's Lottie Corp? A third party without Renfro's approval. Lottie Corp was unaware that Jay exceeded his authority. And they tell us that Lottie has sold goods to Jay before on Henley's behalf. What's the most likely result of this transaction? So here's the third party, Lottie, and they're looking to get paid $3 million for this contract. And maybe they're not looking for the $3 million from Jay, the agent, but they're certainly going to look to the principal for this $3 million. And what's the principal going to say? Well, our agent exceeded his authority. Yeah, but the third party didn't know about that limitation. So in the third party's mind, in Lottie's mind, Jay could have bought any goods. So the answer is Henley, the principal, will be liable for the entire contract, despite the limitations on Jay's actual authority. Because this concept is called apparent authority. And in the third party's mind, they thought that the agent could order any goods. Why were they able to think that? Because it says the third party has sold goods to Jay before on Henley's behalf. So secret limitations placed on the agent's normal authority that's what creates this type of apparent authority. And in this case, it was certainly reasonable for Lottie to believe that Jay had the authority to enter into a $3 million contract since Jay has a position in the company as vice president of purchasing or assistant manager of purchasing. The fact that Renfro secretly limited Jay's authority has no effect. Let's look at these wrong choices. Henley will be liable to Lottie for 500,000, the amount of Jay's actual authority. No, the principal will be liable for the full $3 million contract because of apparent authority. C, Henley will not be liable to Lottie because Jay exceeded his actual authority. No. D, Lottie Corp may not rely on Jay's apparent authority because Lottie had dealt with Jay in the past. No, that's why they can rely on the apparent authority because they have dealt with the agent in the past. So before we went over it, could you have answered that question correctly? You can easily get an agency question just like that on your exam. Now, this next question is on real estate, where somebody has a two-family house, they live in half, and rent out the other. Let's take a look. So this question wants to know how much should be reported as net rental income for year 18. So Crin owns a house, two identical apartments. He lives in one, rents out the other. The apartment's rented under a three-year lease. The tenant made timely monthly rental payments of 1000 for the months of January through November, year 18. Rents for December, year 18 and January, year 19 were made by the tenant, but they weren't made until January 3rd, year 19, which on a cash basis means that's not going to be taxable in year 18. So how much income so far? January through November, that's 11 months. So 11000 is the gross income. But don't pick B because we want the net rental income. We're going to subtract real estate taxes, but only for half of the house because 
he lives in half and rents out the other half. So it's only the rental portion of the real estate taxes that we're going to get a deduction for. So 2000 for taxes. Depreciation on the whole building is 5000 but he can only deduct depreciation on the rental portion. So add another 2500 of deduction. We're up to 4500 of deduction. Maintenance and repairs on the rental, $800. We'll get that whole 800 as a deduction because it says it's on the rental apartment. Watch the wording carefully. If it would have said maintenance and repairs on the entire building, then you would have only got $400 for a deduction. So we're up to 5,300 as a deduction. And then insurance on the whole building is 1,000. So give them $500. And 5,800 is the total deduction. Subtract that from the 11,000 in rental receipts. And the net rental income is 5,200, which is choice A. And that type of question is on the exam all the time, where somebody owns a two family, they live in half and rent out the other. And you can anticipate a question just like that and be able to deduct whatever is rental related on Schedule E, and then what's personal might be deductible on Schedule A. So if you didn't pass reg, could be because of a question like that. Or maybe this next one. Rich and Pam created a Section 529 education savings plan when their child Jamie was born in year eight. In the current year, Jamie attends Norwood High School, a private high school where the tuition cost is 16000 To help with tuition costs, Rich and Pam can withdraw how much from the plan in the current year without being taxed? And the answer is $10,000. Parents can withdraw up to $10,000 from a college savings plan and spend it on K through 12 expenses. So if they don't want to pay any tax, they could take up to 10,000 out of the 529 plan, and then they would have to pay 6,000, the other 6,000 out of their own pocket. Because if they took all 16,000 out of the 529 plan to pay for the private high school, they'd be taxed on $6,000. The first 10,000 is not taxed. Now, what if Jamie was in college? Well, then all 16,000 would come out tax free. But for K through 12 expenses, limit of $10,000 a year. All right, now let's take a look at a question on partnership liability to creditors. Perone, Gail, and Catherine formed the Shore Partnership several years ago. Russo, a client, sued the Shore Partnership, Perone, and Catherine, but not Gail, for breach of contract. The partnership does not have sufficient funds to pay for this breach of contract. Which of the following is correct? So we know that partners have liability for breaches of contract. They have joint and several liability. This allows third parties to sue them together or separately. This is known as joint and several liability. Several means separate, joint means together. Since the partnership is included in a lawsuit, if Russo is successful, Russo will collect first from the partnership. And once partnership assets are exhausted, then Russo can collect from the partners who are being sued, Perone and Catherine. Which one says it best? Not A, because a says Russo may collect from the partnership, but not the partners. Not B, Russo may collect from Perone and Catherine before attempting to collect from the partnership. No, you got to sue the partnership first. And then once the partnership assets are exhausted, then you go after the partners who are being sued. In this case, C, Russo may collect from Perone and Catherine after exhausting the assets of short partnership. D says Russo may not collect from the partnership unless partner Gail consents. To be included in a lawsuit? No. For whatever reason, Russo did not want to include Gail in the lawsuit, and that's fine. And if you need help passing reg, go to cpaexamtutoring.com. Get yourself on I-75, where the right teacher makes all the difference.